Hello everyone, how are you? How's everything? I hope that you're enjoying your holidays with your family and everything is going great. I uh, know that most of you have already gone over the previous lecture that I posted, which was about band pass filters. So please don't forget to also check the problem that I solved about that on the next video. And also I had given an exercise to you at the end of that one that I will seriously encourage you to try to solve the exercise and double check your answers would mean during the next class. So today I'm going to tell you a very simple and very short topic, which is about active filters. So far, all we talked about were about the passive filters. Passive filters means RLC, RL and RC and RLC. So for low pass and high pass, we only had RL and RC. And for band pass, we had RLC. The active filters, they have one main difference with the passive filters. The main difference is about using of an op amp. In passive filters, we only had R, L, and C. In active filters, we also have op amps. In op amps, and usually only R and C. In, in active filters, we don't have L anymore. You know, L inductors are actually pretty expensive. They are expensive. They are bulky. And also, they can create magnetic field and these things and complications. So that's why we always try to avoid inductors. So one of the things that active filters can do for us is to help us avoid the inductors. The other thing is that active filters can actually give us some gain as well because in the passive filter maximum gain that we get is one but here no here you can actually have a gain using the active filter so i'm only going to tell you about active low pass and active high pass and believe it or not it's the easiest thing in the world look this circuit that you see right here this is an active low pass filter. So you remember about the op amps, right? This is an inverting op amp circuit where your source is getting connected to the negative. And you remember that if you want to find the gain of an inverting op amp, your gain will be ZF over Z in, right? So the parallel product of this C and this R over R1 is going to give you the gain of this op amp. But I'm sure that if you want to analyze the circuit, it's easy for you. But I'm going to tell you what is the cutoff frequency of this one. So imagine we have the circuit, which is the general format of any first order low pass filter. We have R1 in the input and we have the R2 and C and a capacitor in parallel in the output. For this circuit, your cutoff frequency can be found using this 1 over R2 C. Let's take this one with us and bring it here. So our cutoff frequency for this filter is 1 over R2 C. As simple as that. This is how we can find the cutoff frequency. And the general format, general format for the transfer function of a, circ of a filter like that is like this, omega c over s plus omega c. This is the general format. If you remember, this format was also there in the, in the passive filters. In the RL and RC, this was the format for, for low pass. It was always this format, omega C over S plus omega C. Over here, you can also see K. What is this K? This is the gain. I told you the only one of the most important advantages of the active filters is that they can have a gain. Something that we didn't have in passive filters. Over there, the maximum gain was one here. It can actually have a gain and the value of the gain will be r2 over r1 so let's go back to our, our circuit in this circuit the gain will be r2 over r1 the cutoff 
is 1 over R2C. Done. That's the only thing that you need to know about the active low pass filter. What else? Now, this is the format of a high pass filter. Look carefully what changed. Over there in the low pass, you had a capacitor and a resistor in parallel in the feedback and only one resistor in the input. In high pass, you have a capacitor and resistor in series in the input and only a resistor in the feedback. So it's easy to remember. In high pass series, in low pass, parallel. In high pass, your resistor is in the feedback and your capacitor and, and resistor is on the input. In low pass, your resistor is in the input. The capacitor and resistor is going to be on the feedback. And what is the cutoff frequency of the high pass? It's 1 over R1C, which makes sense. Always look at the R which is closer to the capacitor. Over there, R2 was close to the capacitor. That was, that's why it was 1 over R2C. Over here, the R1 is closer to the capacitor. So, it's 1 over R1C. We can copy this one and bring it here just to make sure that we will remember. So, the cutoff frequency of the high pass filter is 1 over r1c what is the gain gain is still r2 over r1 and if you remember from the previous chapter when we were talking about the uh, the passive filters the general format of the transfer function for the passive filter was always s over s plus omega c here we have gain as we said it as the advantage of the active filters over passive filters. So, as I said, the subject of active filters is super easy. You only need to remember this one. The first order high pass filter looks like this. A capacitor and resistor in the input in series and only a resistor in the feedback. A low pass filter looks like this. A resistor in the input and a parallel capacitor and resistor in the feedback thank you very much have a beautiful day take care and see you